to Let's Talk Migraine, where we talk about some of the hottest topics faced by people who live with this disabling, complex neurological disorder that affects nearly 40 million people in the US and 1 billion globally. Today, we're going to be talking about partnering with your doctor and why that is so important for disease management, how it is different from the traditional paternalistic model most often seen in the healthcare system, and why having a partnership with your doctor creates a win-win situation for everyone. Angel, I would love to hear from you about your experiences about partnering with your doctor and how easy that has been for you. I think it started with just walking into the appointment and saying, I know my body, I know how I feel. I need you to help me get to a space where either my pain is minimized, hopefully eliminated, but minimized. And having a doctor who is willing to listen to you um, and understand that and encourage you to do the research, encourage you to bring ideas, because there are a lot of things that are developing every day within this field of, um, you know, combating migraine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that I totally relate to that. You know, and Kerry, um, is it a challenge for you to partner with your doctor? And what does it mean to you to fake it when you see your doctor? And what are the ramifications of doing that? It was really hard for me to partner with my doctors at first because I was so in the habit of pretending like I felt okay even when I didn't that I did that with everybody, including my doctors. And it wasn't until I went to an appointment and my husband came with me and afterward he said, you know, you didn't actually let the doctors see how you feel. You, you weren't actually being truthful about the severity of the impact and even the way that I presented myself, like, you know, I, I left the office and my posture slumped. But sitting in the office, you know, I had good posture, got eye contact, like I, I'm being really trying to be personable and friendly, um, which is okay for a social interaction. But um, if you're trying to get help from somebody, you need to be honest about how bad you feel. And it wasn't until I was able to drop that mask and be real with my doctors that I was able to partner with them. That is such an interesting thing you say that, you know, the way we behave with our doctors is often more appropriate in a social setting than it is when we go to see our doctors. We put our makeup on, we'll chat with them, you know, we'll put smiley faces on and we won't show how sick we really are. And the ramifications of that are just so huge. So Erin, what about you? Is that an experience that you have or what is it like for you to partner with your doctor? Well. Um... Currently, my my doctor, we we have a good good relationship, uh, very open dialogue. But prior to that, uh, my personal doctor had referred me to a neurologist who just wanted to write a prescription, and if it didn't work, come back a month later. So didn't care what I had to say. Um, I I just kept on telling her, listen, this isn't working. Okay, we'll try this. I, I we had to part ways because it, it just it wasn't a good relationship. There, she was kind of dictating what I would take. Really didn't you know listen to any feedback from me. Uh, my current neurologist, who had a two-year waiting list, uh, I'm finally on. I've been I've been with him about three years now, I believe. Um, he listens to me. Uh, he, he's he's asked, you know, how how is this affecting you? What do you you know what do you want to have done here? What do you think about this uh, treatment? What do you think about that? And he'll he'll let me send him information that I've done research on myself. And hey, doc, you know, there's this um, new migraine medication that's coming down the line. Is it out yet? Can we, you know, can we get it in my hands? Do you have a trial? Anything like that? And he, he, he puts it back on me to make that choice. You know, if he writes a prescription, he says, listen, it's up to you if you want to take this. But if you don't, you know, then we can try something else. Um, so it, it's very, very much a partnership rather than a, a dictatorship, I guess, uh, because I feel like having a doctor telling you what to take and not listening to any feedback uh, is, is a problem, especially because it's, it's my body. You know, I, I I have to listen to my body. And now that I have a doctor that listens to me telling him, you know, what, what I'm going through, it, it's, it makes the treatment process much more successful. That's interesting that you use the term dictatorship. I was being kind and using the term paternalistic, where basically, <laughs> you know, you're told what to do and you're told what to take and you don't speak. And then you're out of the office, but um, there are some experiences that really do seem more like a dictatorship. I walked out of one doctor's office once and my first visit never came back to him again. 
And the experience was so devastating to me. I just didn't want to see doctors at all for a while. And it's very sad when we go through that. And it's a lose-lose for everybody. It's not only a, um, a lost situation for us because we don't get the treatment and the help we need, but it's, it's, it doesn't work for the doctors either. When they're not able to find out what's really going on in our lives, then they're not able to help us. And when we don't partner with them, then they have to spend more time trying to figure out what's going to work for us. And so I see you nodding your head, Angel, and I'd, I'd love to hear what you think about that. Well, I just mentioned my neurologist and she and I have been together for about five years. Um, my migraine attacks have become more chronic and more intense. And I met with her last week and she was so disappointed in herself. She said to me, we have to find you another physician. You can stay with me, but I really want to see if there's somebody else that can help you because I'm tired of seeing you in pain. I was in tears last week when I met with her. I was uncontrolled. I was just in so many tears because of what these attacks are doing to my life and the fact that she heard me and she felt that she was doing me a disservice so that both of us were going to look to find me a doctor. She didn't say you go, she said, we're both gonna look and we're gonna find someone that can help you. And that in itself meant so much to me. I love that you have a doctor who is working with you like that. I, I think that that is fabulous. And that's really the gold standard, I think that all of us look for when we are looking for a doctor to help us treat migraine. And just bearing in mind that this is such a complex disease that it varies for each of us that when we don't talk to our doctors about what is going on, when we don't partner with them, they really don't understand how best to treat us. I want to throw something else in here and then I'm going to throw it over to you, Kerry. And that is that, you know, obviously our doctor's visits, they're really short. You know, at most you'll have like 15 minutes. If you have an extended visit, maybe 30 minutes and trying to get through everything you need to do in that period of time or all the things you need to communicate can be really challenging and really challenging for the doctors as well to, to figure out what is going on in your life. So do you have any uh, uh, tips or tricks that you use, Carrie, to help maximize that time that you have with your doctor? Before I go to an appointment, maybe in the week before the appointment, I'll keep running notes on my phone, like something comes to mind and actually not even just the week between appointments. If something comes up that I have a question about, I'll, I'll make a note on my phone. And then a few days before my appointment, I'll look through everything. Sometimes I'll ask my husband, is there anything that you've seen me talk about, you've heard me talk about, uh, or that seems to be an issue for me that maybe I haven't captured? And then I prioritize my list. And I'll, at the most, I'll have maybe six questions, knowing that time is short, I'll probably only get three answered. And there's one other piece, as I'm hearing everybody talk, I realize we have different, each patient has a different desire, a different level of comfort with a partnership. Some people do want a doctor who's basically going to tell them what, what should be done. Other people want to do extensive research. People are all over the spectrum. And so I think it's important to figure out what feels right to you. And you do need a doctor where you feel like you can speak up um, that's really important to know your body and to be able to ask for what it is that you need. Maybe there are side effects that you can't tolerate. You need to be comfortable saying that. Um, but if you're somebody who does want a doctor who is going to be more prescriptive, that's totally okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a great point. You need to find what is most comfortable for you. And especially if you're like early on in the disease, you've just recently been diagnosed, it, it's probably a, a more simple situation. You're going to go to the doctor. You're not going to know much about migraine. You're going to want them to be more prescriptive in, in their treatment plan for you. If you've had migraine for a long period of time, if you're more complex, if you have multiple comorbidities, then you're more likely to want to be involved. So Aaron, is, which, which end of the spectrum do you fall on with that? For me, I, I'm my own advocate and I need to tell them, hey, I've already tried all these different things, I found something different. This is what we need to work on. And, you know, to kind of touch on on, uh, on Carrie's comments about having a list, going in there with a the list and showing the doctor, that's a, that's a great idea. You can you can track things with an app, uh, make things more easier, uh, but kind of stepping in, you know, to, to where you're at is is the best idea 
uh, because you know when I started out, I I didn't know what to take. Now I'm in a, in a place in my journey where I still don't know what to take, but I I know what hasn't worked, and I'd like to try something new. Here's this new thing with all this research. What do you think about this, doctor? You know, and so that's that's kind of where I'm at as being a self a self advocate, so that I'm not going through the motions uh, and trying things that I've already tried that that don't work for me personally. Aaron mentioned using an app, which is a time-honored tool, not the app itself, but a headache diary of some sort. You can use an app, you can use a written journal, you can just make random notes. I actually print out calendar pages and write it on calendar pages. Any way that you are comfortable tracking your migraine frequency in particular, I like frequency, severity, if, uh, if it's helpful for you, symptoms, if you took a medication, like you can go into as little or as much detail as you want. Um, but having that to take to your doctor's appointment can be a really helpful way for them to understand what your life is like between appointments because they only see you every three months or you know, sometimes once a year. And so to show them what your experience with migraine is actually like, having a di diary is a great way to do that. And I know Angel keeps a headache journal that she takes to her appointments. Can you tell us more about that, Angel? Yes, I track my migraines as well as my sons who also have chronic migraine um, attacks. And in there, I look at my symptoms. I look at my triggers. I look at the time of the day, if I had X amount of sleep, water. Those things help not just my physician when we're looking at treatment, but it also helps me identify what has brought on this particular attack. And it also helps me mitigate future attacks as well. So that allows me a level of agency of my own health care. So when I go to my physician, I can state, I recognize that when there's air pressure change that I am getting attacked. What can we do about that? And that has been very helpful in my dialogue. One, one, of, the, one of my tools, uh, since we're you know, keeping on track with, with you know, keeping diaries and stuff, uh, my, my physician or my, my specialist actually uses a portal. So in between in-person trips or visits, I can contact him and uh, uh, either he uh, or, or one of the nurses from, uh, from that office will respond to me. And sometimes, you know, it, it helps to, uh, you know, break or to, you know, to help during that break of, of phys in person appointments uh, to say, hey, you know, this is going on, this is something new, uh, or hey, there's this new medication out there. You know, before I come in there, can we get the legwork out of the way done, and, you know, get it done so that we can address that, uh, you know, in person and find out you know, how this is working for me now. So having that availability to just reach out to a doctor virtually, uh, even through email or something is, uh, is, is really valuable because then you can send your, your notes to them uh, ahead, of, ahead of your appointment. It's interesting you say that, Erin. Um, many years ago, before I had a headache specialist where I currently live, I had a neurologist who was a movement disorder specialist and would frequently say to me, he doesn't know anything about migraine. And he would ask me to send him articles through the portal ahead of time about things that I've discovered. And, and I love that he was actually one of the best doctors I've ever worked with because he wanted to learn more. And that was so incredible. One of the tools that we have as an organization is a migraine treatment toolbox, which you can download from our website, just as a conversation starter. We're not doctors, we can't prescribe medications for you. We can't say what's best for you, but we can let you know what tools are out there for you. And then you can talk to your doctors about that. You can say, hey, I've tried this and this, but I haven't tried that. Is this appropriate for me? And so anything that is a conversation starter is a really appropriate tool. I love uh, what Angel and what Kerry said about the importance of having some kind of tracker for your migraine. Uh, we all know that when we walk into a doctor's office, most of the time we're asked to fill out how many days we've had migraine, a whole lot of other information. And again, I don't remember that information unless it's actually on a tracker. So that is a really important thing to do. So thank you so much for all those tips. I think that they're super important. So if you live with migraine, discovering ways to partner with your doctor can make a huge difference. Be prepared with questions before your appointment. Come in with a migraine tracker of some kind. If you're comfortable, research treatment options ahead of time. Follow up on prescriptions that your doctor um, orders for you just to see where they're at in case your insurance is denying them or they need more information. Most of all, be mindful of your own body and don't ignore things that are bothering you. You know your own body and symptoms the best. And a good doctor is going to want to hear what you have to say. 
so they can work with you to discover ways to minimize the impact of migraine in your life.